Believe it or not, even though we are a state that is proud, has a proud motto of live free and die, well, in healthcare, you don't in New Hampshire. It's, it is not free. Uh, and there is not a lot of choice. As a matter of fact, New Hampshire is the poster child of what is wrong in healthcare. Okay? And I'll show you uh, some statistics that will support that. But it's unfortunate. We have a great state. And um, I was born and raised here, and, uh, and I can say that from the heart. But without question, um, we are what is wrong. We are the poster child of what is wrong in healthcare. Here's a sli slide of the Korean Peninsula. All right. And north of, uh, you have a lit section and you have a dark section. The power of the free market. Freedom, free market, free choice. Okay. It is essential to healthcare and improving healthcare. The definition of free market is basically a system where private businesses compete and as a result of competition and choice, you get a natural checks and balance on pricing, where the price of whatever you purchase is a reflection of its cost. Well, guess what? In healthcare, that doesn't exist at all, and you will see that. Okay, what we pay for healthcare services is no reflection of what it actually costs, because healthcare is void of free market principles. The power of the free market. I actually feel I'm speaking to like-minded people, so I'm going to give you ammunition when you go out to talk about the free market in healthcare. Think about it. Here are like people, genetically, culturally, but one group lives under communism, and another group lives in a free market capitalistic system. And look at the difference. You have a people, you have a vibrant, economy, and then you have one that is totally sleeping. Lights are out, okay? It's powerful. It really it is what makes our country great. And for some darn reason, we're afraid to apply free market principles in healthcare. Here's the cost of care. These are premiums and deductibles arising faster than wages over the past decade. No surprise, you're all living it. And basically, what's happening is that even though people are getting raises, total, their total compensation or take-home pay has not really risen. They're paying more into their premiums. Keep in mind, insurance premiums are part of compensation. That all started, the problem started in World War, World War II when um, basically, there were wage, free, wage freezes, and the only way you could attract employees or compete for employees was to offer them benefits as part of total compensation. So what's happening today, people are basically, you know, their purchase power capability is pretty much flatlined because of the cost of premiums. But what's also interesting here is that deductibles have gone up. So think about that. Right, your, your premiums have gone up. You think you're paying more and you're gonna get more? Well, guess what? You're getting less. We're in a system today where people are self-insured except for catastrophes. All right? Leading cause of bankruptcy. Anyone know? Yeah, medical care, health care. How awful is that? That's the evil of the system we are in. It bankrupts people. I like this slide. Where is the money going? But I do not want to have you conclude that there's a big insurance problem. I actually see insurance companies as the middleman. Okay, they just pass money, and they're not taking risk. You are, the employer is. All right, but look, look since the Affordable Care Act, 2010, stock at Anthem was 
Look what it is today. And this is today. $381. Cigna. So these are the big four. All right, Affordable Care Act, 37 bucks. Hope some of you invest in these companies. <laughs> All right, stock today is 239 bucks. United, this was a great investment. $33 when the Affordable Care Act started, and now it's almost 400 bucks a share. So, and uh, let's beat on Humana. All right, they were 49 bucks a share. Now they're 415. That's incredible. You really think about it. And everyone thought when the Affordable Care Act was passed that the, this would have crushed the insurance companies. The opposite happened. What many people did not realize is that in your premium dollars, if you are commercially insured, part of your premium dollars goes to pay off the insurance companies. I believe it's a 5 or 6% immediate of your premium goes right to them. Basically, they bought them off. So they would not lobby against the passing of the Affordable Care Act. And keep in mind, it only passed by one vote. Okay, so there was a lot of shenanigans going on to make sure that it happened. I love this slide. Price changes in the United States as a result of goods. Now, there's a common theme between the green, if you may, and the reddish, okay? Can anyone pick it out? The government subsidizes the things that are going up. And there you go. Smart guy. <laughs> Very good. Look, look at this. Wherever the government is involved, free market principles go awry, okay? And where the free market exists, you actually get price depression. Can you imagine if we just could say, you know what, the, the cost curve, you know, only went up like 10%, okay? It'd be, you know, if, if we even can flatline the cost of healthcare. All right, it's the healthcare. It's the cost of healthcare. It's not, the, you know, everyone's pointing to the insurance company and premiums. It is not that. The cost of care, the delivery of care is insane. It is broken. And these institutions keep expanding. And you know why? They get paid more. There's no financial reason for a college, large university with a large endowment, or a hospital system to stop constructing. And with construction comes more people, more utilities, and so on and so forth. Joe Matarisi talked about a couple services in healthcare that actually have not gone up in price. Plastic surgery and corrective eye care. Does anybody know why? Insurance doesn't pay for it. That's all right. It's not a covered benefit. It's cash only. But cash only isn't really the real, real reason, all right? The real reason is it's not a covered benefit. It's not mandated. So what happens? The patient has an incentive to ask, what does it cost me? Healthcare went off the tracks around 1970 when insurance companies got between the patient and the doctor. Some of you are old enough to remember when you went to the doctor or when you got a health care service, you actually received the bill. You were able to make a value judgment at the time of care to say, you know what, this was worth it or it wasn't. Then you got the bill, you paid the bill, you turned around and submitted the receipt to your insurance company, and they reimbursed, okay, on basically what was what was reasonable and customary was the term, okay? But the, the beauty of that situation was you were now an informed individual who can make a value judgment, all right? Jeff's example, go to the doctor, you don't even know what the hell you're paying for, all right? No idea, none. Or the person down the street, what they're charging, no idea. Can you imagine if you had to make a value, you could make a value judgment, meaning you went to the doctor today, 
and the metric for patient time face-to-face -face is 15 minutes. How ridiculous is that? And then you just, had, you just got billed for 250 bucks. You'd go out of your mind. But that doesn't happen. You would say, this visit wasn't worth it. You didn't even put a hand on me. So back to corrective eye surgery and plastic surgery. What also happens in those events is that there's a, in the plastic surgery, it's a bundled payment. That, at, that surgeon actually goes out and negotiates with the surgical center, with the implant center, depending on the procedure, okay, and all the parts of the transaction, okay? And he puts together a transparent price so that you see, you'll know what your boobs are gonna cost or your facelift's gonna cost <laughs> or whatever. Okay? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, but you, 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 and, and you shop, you know? Just got divorced, I think I knew a new set. You get out, and, right, you get on the internet and you go out and shop. <laughs> Okay, and you make a value judgment, okay? And guess what? The cost of plastic surgery in the last 10 years has hardly risen at all. I wish we could say that for other elective cares. Again, it's the power of the free market. Believe in it. It's what makes us great. It's what we need. Uh, you want to see chaos? So recently, we launched a company called Bizarre. Basically, it's a technology solution to bring the free market into healthcare. Okay, I've been dabbling, not dabbling, I've been working hard in the last eight years uh, in creating transparency in healthcare and, and making informed consumers out of all of you. These are, these are New Hampshire prices. These are real prices. These are no, there's no lie here, okay? And these are bundled payments. This is all in. All right. MRI. Negotiated price, $900 for Czar. Average hospital price, $3,250. That's average. Could pay as much as $5,000. OK, the price difference on average is $2,350. Now, if you're in a $5,000 deductible or 10,000 family, don't you want to know? Or if you're an employer who is self-insured, and you are paying dollar for dollar every claim. Or your municipality, you like the state of New Hampshire, city of Manchester, I think you'd want to know what your employees are paying for, as you eventually will be paying for. Look at the total knee replacement, though. For those of us in that age group, all right, all in. And I can say this, I'm a healthcare provider. I'm a CEO of three ambulatory surgical centers and I'm proud to tell you we replace knees. We do spine work now. Technology has allowed us to do many, many larger procedures on an outpatient basis. But look at that. Savings, average savings of $36,000. Wouldn't you want to know as an employer? Lumbar decompression, basically people with back problems. One th procedure that's not up here that I don't see is a colonoscopy. Most common procedure done. I won't ask who's had colonoscopies here, but <laughs> you should be proud. <laughs> it's a great procedure. It's, it's, it's very important, okay? <laughs> Average price in our market, Southern New Hampshire, all in is close to $10,000. Yet there are various surgical centers that can do it for $2,200. You know what the evil of that is? People with high deductibles, they can't get a screening for cancer. We talk about the merits of having a colonoscopy and preventing cancer, but people can't afford it. And so, Again, what's going on is evil. The price of healthcare, remember this, the price of healthcare is the leading obstacle to access to care. And there are solutions. 
I know, again, I'm speaking to like-minded people. It is the free market. And elective care, and I'll be the first to tell you, not all of health care will be solved by the free market, but a whole hell of a lot of it will be. Elect elective care, by the way, is care is when you have time to make a decision. It's not emergent, okay? And you have time, and you need, you think you need care, okay, that is elective care. So these are things that are obstacles to the free market. And again, the free market, you need an informed consumer. There's a lack of transparency. President Trump put out a mandate for hospitals to start posting their prices. And guess what? That ain't going to happen, number one. Number two, even if they post your price, it isn't the whole story. That may be just the facility fee. Well, let's talk about the knee transplant, uh, the knee implant. You have, right, the knee surgery, total knee replacement. You have your facility. You have the thesis. Okay, you have the surgeon. You have the anesthesia group. You may have lab. Okay, and other ancillary services. So just posting one line item is like buying a car just for the chassis, okay? What about the rest of it? And believe it or not, the shenanigans that are played in healthcare, you may see an affordable facility fee. But I've seen implant costs range from 4,000 to 14,000, and there is no scientific difference, no medical difference in the implant whatsoever, okay? There's a lack of transparency big time. And it is actually going to take healthcare providers who provide, who build cars, okay, who build healthcare services to step up at the plate. But they don't want to. These large hospital systems have it well. Their increase in reimbursement goes up every year. And the insurance companies, they really don't care. They just pass that risk on to you or the employer because they get 10% by law of whatever the medical costs, over the medical costs. So as medical costs go up, their income goes up, guaranteed. This chaos is guaranteed to keep happening unless we intervene. Who's we? That's the biggest question. Who is we? Anyone know? Who's pay Who actually pays for premiums? People or Joe? The employers. Yeah. We have an employer sponsor healthcare system, which actually puts you, the patient and the consumer, further away from decision making. Many of my employees have no idea what their coverage is. None. Usually it's the wives who know, because they're taking the kids, right? Husbands, gonzo. Really? Okay. Unless they go for breast implants. Those husbands will know. <laughs> you never know these days. All right. So these are factors, you know, again, cost of care, what we pay for prices is no reflection of its cost. And... It's just complicated, by design, by design. And these poor doctors, you know, who are sucking the life blood out of them. They're losing their passion because of the technology, the harangment to ask permission to operate. I'll give you an anecdotal story. My brother's a surgeon, and he's got a patient who's got a frozen shoulder, and the interesting part about shoulders is that you know, they are painful. How many have had rotator cuff repair? <laughs> okay, you'll know. I'm glad you can put your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is, he's, a, he's got a lady in her mid-50s. She's got a frozen shoulder. She needs surgery ASAP. He has to call some, admit, some intervener, Mother May I system that the insurance company requires. He 
He's on the phone for 15 minutes explaining the procedure, and my brother can tell all of a sudden that he's supposed to be speaking to a peer. He can tell he's not speaking to a peer. And my brother asks, what kind of physician are you? I'm a podiatrist. Now, this is real. In disgust, my brother just hangs up, goes to the patient and says, listen, i just been on the phone for 15 minutes with a podiatrist ask permission to get permission to operate on your shoulder. You need shoulder surgery. You go talk to your health plan and get permission. And when you, and when you get permission, I'll be more than happy to operate. These poor docs, they're getting really, really tired. And there's another insidious evil in this whole dialogue. One of my personal missions is to preserve private practice. Because the people that are in private practice, the doctors that are in private practice, who have not thrown up their arms and capitulated to the large healthcare systems that they compete with, and yet offer far better care at a far lower price point. Okay. What's going on is you're seeing consolidations, as Joe talked about, okay, where the guys in private practice who pay taxes, these big box stores of healthcare don't, okay, and they compete with them. And so if we don't solve for what's going on, because physician salaries hasn't, hasn't gone up, their overhead has. If we don't solve for this, private practice will become extinct. And that trend is going on. And that will be the worst of all evils. Because it is the person in private practice who feels the pressure every day to compete, who stays abreast on what's, what the hell's going on, who will spend time with you. And when you ask to see them, they will see you. All right. If we don't get this thing going in the right direction, this issue in the right direction, private practice will become extinct. So, anyways, it's great talking to you. All right. I am optimistic about the future. I really, really am. Okay. Well, you'll hear more about Bizarre because we do have a solution. Okay. We really do. So, again, thank you. <laughs>